working on today is fixing some issues I have on my own car, including swapping a tie rod that snapped on me that we actually installed in a previous video. In addition to like explaining why I don't think you should be running those tie rods anymore. And I'm also gonna be installing my Nismo power brakes while I'm under the court. So what we're gonna be starting with is swapping the tie rod because that's what needs to be fixed in order for the car to move back into the garage because it was kind of a struggle for it to come out and I doubt I'm gonna be able to get it back in. But yeah, before I swap it, I wanted to explain some things like why I don't think people should be running this brand's tie rods. It's because um, this used to be on the passenger side of my car and if you notice from the beginning clips, my driver's side of the car's tie rod is snapped. And basically the story behind this is about a year ago, I drove my car about 50 miles away to visit one of my friends in Salinas. And my car was fine and everything, I was going like 90 on the freeway. And then as I was pulling into a gas station going like literally half a mile per hour, tie rod snapped. Keep in mind before this, I did two events at Thunder Hill, which is all on like my YouTube page. And I installed everything correctly because it's documented on a previous video too, yet it still snapped. So basically I made a post on Facebook about it and I got like a lot of people's attention who also said they had a problem with this brand's tie rod snapping on them, including getting the attention of the owner of the company who said to me that they actually had a revised shank to fix that problem and he sent me two of them. Basically from that point I had like two options. I could just like swap in the revised shank and continue on or I could do a test which is what I wanted to do. So here we are a year later after that and the driver's side snapped. Basically what I wanted to test was if I had a fluke of a shank or if um, the shanks themselves were bad and they all snap and now I do have a conclusion that these shanks do snap and I don't think people should be running them. And also to back up that, before the GK Tech ones, um, I did run some cheap ISR ones and you can see they're pretty blown out, but they didn't snap. And these were on the car for like two years. I just got the driver's side off the car and comparing it to the passenger side that snapped a year ago, I am noticing something that's like pretty similar which is where they both snapped. They both snapped where the tie rod meets the knuckle right at the threads, which my guess is this is like a really weak point of the tie rod. And you could see on the opposing side where the nuts are, the casting for the shank wasn't like the best with like a lot of pits and stuff so I'm guessing there was like just a lot of air in the casting which made this like a real weak point which is why they snap here. For the upgraded shanks or upgraded shanks I'm not sure if they improved upon this area but I guess we could try at a later date but not right now. But yeah what I'm gonna do right now is put on another cheap O'Reilly's tie rod on the driver's side of the car. This is what I ran on the passenger side of the car for about a year now while having a high misalignment tire on the driver's side which did kind of make the car feel a little funny because there was bump steer correction on one side but not the other but I did want to test out to see if um, the shanks were a weak point or not and yeah what I'm going to be doing is just putting all this on the driver's side and eventually getting a drop knuckle but until then cheap tire on. plate it afterwards and see how off it is but all right well I'm pretty upset because I just realized that um, I rubbed through my wiring harness I did have a harness shield on the car and had the harness tucked up pretty high and I kind of ignored the fact that I could rub through my harness because when I had my old R33s that were 17s it never even came close to touching but I didn't think about when I put my Model 5s in the front that are 18s that it might hit 
and now I have some shit to deal with. We got the tie rod on. I'm still pretty depressed that I noticed that my harness is all rubbed through because I didn't think that would be an issue since I did have it tucked up pretty high. But yeah, I don't want to deal with that today. I just kind of want to ignore it for now. Uh, the next thing we're going to be doing is installing my Nismo power brace. I got this one used so it is kind of like dusty, but it'll work until I like powder coat the rear subframe and the front subframe whenever I refresh this car. Alright, to start installing the power brace, we need to start taking things off. And the first thing that needs to come off is the sway bar. And to do that, there are two 14s on each side that attach to the tension rod bracket that we need to remove, which will drop the sway bar down. And then after that, we can remove the 17s that hold the tension rod to the tension rod brackets over here on each side. And then after that, we can remove the two 17s up here and then the tension rod should be able, the tension rod bracket should be able to come out and we can replace it with the power brace. traction arms because honestly I was lazy I didn't want to pull the wheels or anything off but I realized you do need to pull the traction arms off because right where the head of this uh, traction arm is there's a bolt you need to get to and I tried getting to it with just a swivel and ended up busting my pinky so I was like all right I'll just pull this out because I always had a feeling that my traction arms might be a different length side to side but now that I got to pull it out I finally get to see because the previous owner did put these on on the car, I didn't do it. I finally get to see that these arms are like the same length, which is pretty reassuring. But one thing I did notice is, which one was it? Yeah, this nut is loose. So gotta tighten that. But yeah, traction arms do need to come out to install a power brace. I got the normal tension rod brackets out of the core and you can see there's a pretty big difference between the normal tension rod brackets and the Nismo one. Uh, the biggest difference is that the normal tension rod brackets are two pieces and the Nismo one is one piece because it has this welded on support bar that ties the two tension rod brackets together to basically make it stronger and then also uh, the normal tension rods are just like stamped steel and you can see they're uh, hollow right here so there's and the tension rod bolts right here so basically what that does is it makes the tension rod brackets able to flex in and out which could obviously cause alignment issues and then the Nismo one is boxed in to ensure that it doesn't flex the tension rod uh, bolting points and it has the board so I couldn't really show this that well in the car so I'm gonna recreate it outside the car so I can explain it a little better the reason you want to remove the tension rods themselves is because you'll notice there's a mounting hole right behind it which you can't really get to with the arm in its way and yeah so the arm needs to come out to get to this bolt this is where the sway bar bolts to so you need to remove that and then up here you're gonna have the two 17s that hold it in place and a 14 right here. And then on the um, driver's side or the left side of the car, if you have a right-hand drive car, there are two 10 millimeters right here that hold a bracket on they need to remove. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. You just undo some bolts and it comes right out. So I'm putting this on by hand and not tightening anything yet because I want to make sure everything lines up correctly before I tighten it all down.
73 and an eighth. And 73 and a sixteenth. So eighth inch to out. Perfect. Somehow, just by eyeballing it, I guess we got the toe pretty good. So we don't have to mess with it. So it looks like we got the toe perfect on the first try somehow. Not gonna question it, but yeah. We got the power brace on and we got the tie rod replaced. So we're gonna call it a day here because it is the end of the day. So yeah, thank you.